Louisa of Sweden was Queen of Denmark from 1906 until 1912, as the spouse of King Frederick VIII. Louisa was born on the 31st of October 1851 at the Royal Palace in Stockholm. She was the first child born to the then Crown Prince Charles of Sweden and Norway and his wife Louise of the Netherlands. In 1852 her younger brother Prince Carl Oscar was born but he died in 1854. The tragic death left the succession in crisis when it became clear that her mother would be unable to have any more children due to an injury she sustained giving birth to Prince Carl Oscar. Her mother offered to the Crown Prince a divorce, but he refused. Louise was passed over as heir to her father in favour of his younger brother, Prince Oscar, despite her father requesting she be his heir. This was due to the Swedish Act of Succession, 1810, which abolished female succession and introduced agnatic succession. On the 8th of July, 1859, Louise's grandfather, King Oscar I, died, and her father succeeded him as King of Sweden and Norway under the name of Charles XV. From that point onwards, he made several attempts to obtain a constitutional amendment which would recognise Louisa as his heir. However, his attempts were in vain due to Louisa's uncle, Prince Oscar, having several sons, the first born in 1858. Eventually, Charles became content on arranging a marriage for Louisa so that she would be queen of another realm. Louisa was nicknamed Cecin, or Sissy in English by her family. Louisa herself made up the nickname Stockholm Urchin for herself, which shocked her uncle. He tried to curb its use, criticising Louisa for using the nickname. He was the only one who imposed any discipline on the princess, for Louisa was a loved but spoilt child, doted upon by her parents. She was said to have looked like her mother in appearance, but being like her father in behaviour. She was described as energetic and masculine. Children's balls were arranged for her at the royal palace, which were considered an important part of the upper class children's social life. Her academic education was provided by her governess and in 1862 she and her mother became students of Nancy Edberg a pioneer of swimming for women. At the time, swimming was not regarded as proper for women, but when the Queen and her daughter supported it, swimming soon became a fashionable activity for women. The choice of Louisa's future husband was considered by her parents early on. The most popular candidate was Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark, the eldest son of King Christian IX of Denmark. The marriage was considered desirable. Relations between the two countries had been tense for a time for a number of reasons. In 1863, when King Frederick VII of Denmark died, there was support for having Charles XV or his brother Oscar placed on the Danish throne. The throne eventually went to Christian IX. In Denmark, there was disappointment over the fact that Sweden had not supported Denmark against Prussia during the Danish-Prussian War. In 1864, Sweden, Norway and Denmark discussed plans to create a symbolic reconciliation between the countries by arranging a marriage between Princess Louisa and Crown Prince Frederick. The couple were introduced to each other in 1862. Charles XV did not wish for his daughter to enter an arranged marriage and therefore left the decision up to her on whether the match suited her. On the 14th of April 1868, a meeting was arranged between Louisa and Frederick in Sweden. As the matter was dependent upon whether Louisa would like Frederick, the guests were not informed about the purpose of the meeting. Only Frederick and his father were present from the Danish royal family. Upon meeting, Louisa and Frederick apparently found each other agreeable and were engaged on the 15th of June, 1868. 
During the engagement period, Louisa learned the Danish language and studied Danish history, culture and literature. They were wed on the 28th of July, 1869 in the Royal Palace in Stockholm. The wedding was celebrated far and wide in Sweden, Denmark and Norway. Louisa was the first Swedish princess to marry into the Danish royal family since the Middle Ages. They arrived in Copenhagen on the 10th of August 1869 where they were warmly received. In Denmark, Louisa became known as Louise. They took up residence in Frederick VIII's palace, a palace in the Amalienborg Palace complex. As their country residence, they received Charlottenlund Palace where they found refuge far away from court life, and several of their children were born there. Between 1870 and 1890, the couple had eight children, Christian X of Denmark, Hakon VII of Norway, Louise, Harald, Ingeborg, Tura, Gustav and Dagmar. Charlottenlund Palace was expanded to accommodate their growing family. Louise found life difficult during her time as crown princess. She was very popular with the public and was considered intelligent with the ability to act effortlessly at official functions. However, she was unpopular with her Danish family and the Danish court. The marriage did not improve relations between the Danish and Swedish royal houses and in Denmark, Louise experienced ostracism from the royal family. Her mother-in-law Louise and her sisters-in-law Alexandra and Dagmar did not like her and her husband was too timid to support her. Only her youngest sister-in-law Tura liked her. Her personality, cheeky and straightforward, did not fit in with the Danish court and the two got on well. The Queen was used to getting her way and Louise did not take too kindly to being told what to do. The Queen also did not like how popular Louise was and tried her best to prevent her from upstaging the Queen, such as placing the Crown Princess in shadows at ceremonial events where her presence was required. During the first years of her marriage, Louise often visited Sweden. In March 1871, she was present for her mother's death, which devastated Louise. Her father passed away a year later. The deaths of both her parents within the span of a year pained her deeply, and she was given comfort by her uncle's spouse, Sophie, who became her confidant and friend. Louise's mother-in-law disliked the Swedish royal family and insisted that Louise inform her and ask permission first before visiting them. Though Louise loved Frederick, his lifestyle and adultery damaged their relationship and this caused great pain for Louise. She found comfort in religion, learned Greek and engaged in Bible studies to cope. Unusual for the time, Louise raised her children herself instead of passing them off to governesses. She was strict with them, raising them in a household dominated by religion and duty. Because of her inheritance from her grandparents, the family lived well. Louise had hoped that one of her daughters would marry back into the Swedish royal family, which happened for her daughter Ingeborg when she married Prince Karl, Duke of Västergötland, in 1897. Louise and Frederick became grandparents for the first time when their daughter Louise gave birth to her first child, Marie, in 1897. As Crown Princess, Louise was active in both charitable and religious activities. She found several charity organisations, such as the Asylum of Crown Princess Louise, and formed an interest in church associations for the inner mission in Denmark. In 1905, Norway became independent from Sweden with Danish support, which caused tension between Denmark and Sweden. She was saddened by this as it made it increasingly difficult for her to visit Sweden. Her second son Karl became King of Norway after being elected in 1905. He took the name Hakon. In 1906, Louise became Queen of Denmark after the death of her father-in-law, 
As queen, she continued the many roles she had had as crown princess. She didn't care much for ceremonial duties and public events and lived a discreet life dedicated to her children, grandchildren and her hobbies. Only one of Louise's children died during her lifetime. Her eldest daughter Louise died in 1906. Louise of Denmark was in an unhappy arranged marriage and died in April 1906 at the age of 31. She reportedly died of meningitis. However, it has been rumoured she attempted to take her own life by drowning in the lake by her castle, caught a chill and eventually died of this. Louise's husband died in 1912 and her eldest son Christian became King Christian X of Denmark. She was the last widow of a Danish monarch to officially use the title of Queen Dowager. In 1915 to 1917, she built herself Egland Castle, where she lived for the rest of her life. She passed away on the 20th of March 1926 at Emelianborg Palace and is interred next to her husband in Roskilde Cathedral.